Today we will be discussing the educational philosophy of Horace Mann. Known as the father of the common school movement, Mann's contribution to education is still visible and his philosophy is still evidenced in our public school systems today. Horace Mann was born in Massachusetts in the late 1700s. Most of his education was actually self-guided. He attended primary school for a while, but had to drop out once his father passed away in 1809. For Mann, this actually worked in his favor. See, the school curriculum at that time was very limited. Most of the teachers were also young men with no experience and no training. Learning was just memorization and recitation. There was no consideration for meaning. And man was actually able to do more reading and learning on his own. The religious texts, which you can see on the slide, were the only texts approved for use in the classroom usually by clergy. While the text helped students learn to read, they did not encourage understanding, comprehension, and critical thinking. In a country where growth and urbanization were booming, Mann concluded that the traditional education would be useless in dealing with everyday life, much less help people contribute to society. So thinking of the hierarchy that's was in place in society, man aimed to use education as a way to level the playing field. The affluent already had access to the best education and the most opportunities. There was no fair representation, nor did they learn how to become involved, and they didn't understand the process. The more people are involved in their nation's interests, the more successful, Horace Mann believed, the nation would be. So, believing the common school to be the solution, man began to envision the curriculum. It would include basic skills, but also include learning that would create a more holistic experience for students. They would learn multiple topics, how to think critically, enjoy the arts, and work to meet their potential. So, once appointed as Secretary of Education in Massachusetts, Mann began to get to work. He visited schools around the state and seeing the conditions, he felt it very important to include that in his first report. Schools needed fixing. They needed more light, they needed more ventilation, and they needed sources of heat. Next was the curriculum. The curriculum needed to include a wider variety of learning topics to prepare students for everyday life, as well as civic service. Recognizing that teachers were, un, were very unprepared, he recommended additional education and training by the way of normal schools, which were specific for teacher preparation. Having common schools would create equalized learning experiences with diverse peers. Mann believed that the common school could mirror the diversity of society but in a more peaceful fashion. And he was hoping that would have a positive effect on the society at large. Understanding the environment must uh, also be conducive to learning. Horace Mann also moved away from using male teachers toward using female teachers, since they were less likely to use corporal punishment as a behavior management strategy. So though man's vision was to include all children, he did experience resistance. He experienced resistance from religious leaders, um, especially those of the Roman Catholic faith, the affluent, and also some parents of the lower socioeconomic classes. They even expressed concerns. So since he was guided by his own religious experience when creating the common school curriculum, um, a lot of the moral learnings that were included were more Protestant in nature. Of course, the Roman Catholics felt that this was very discriminatory. Um, parents, especially those who were still working very hard, those parents felt that the common school and its teachers may be taking the place of parental roles in teaching values and morals. And of course, the rich actually had no interest in their children being educated with others. 
especially those with very diverse backgrounds. Even so, man continued to focus on the goals, social change, fostering a peaceful society, and building character and knowledge in children. An educated population could make educated decisions regarding its representation. So man created the common school curriculum through the lens of a Christian worldview. So even though he didn't expressly state his religious purpose, the values and the studies that were reflected in the curriculum definitely reflected the presence of God. Studying man serves to inform us of how our educational system works today and also how it still needs to be improved. Believing in the potential of students is central to the public school philosophy, and most of man's ideas continue to resonate in education. Critical thinking is championed over memorization. Individual success is important, but so is the greater good. It is important to prepare children for adult life, not just for survival, but for the common good of their communities and the nation. Thank you.